I know that you were tweeting out about a, um, a protest that was happening um, in Tel Aviv earlier today. Tell us more about what, what you saw and what was happening there. The protest started with one man this morning who sat down uh, like on a picnic chair in front of the defense ministry and said he was going on a hunger strike and he wasn't going to budge until his family came back. This is a man called Avichai or Amichai Brodets. His wife and his three children were kidnapped by Hamas terrorists in the village where they lived, um, Kfar Aza, if I'm not mistaken, a week ago. And he has yet to hear a single word from any government representative. And um, his case represents a lot of people, unfortunately, in this country right now. So word that he was there got out quickly, and very quickly he was surrounded by hundreds and then around 1,000 supporters and many, many, many other family members in an equal sense of anguish. Um, at one kind of ugly moment during the day, they were um, insulted and um, almost kind of attacked by supporters of the prime minister who were saying very ugly things to them. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, but the main message is that, I mean, you know, Netanyahu hasn't yet um, met any member of the public in these eight days of war. He has completely detached himself. The images that you're showing now show him, as you can tell, in a not quite real flak jacket meeting a very small group of soldiers in a very managed moment. And this is the very first time anyone has seen him outside of his office in eight days. And no member of the public was there. The mayors of Israel's south are enraged. Many of them are from his own party. They weren't invited and they weren't even told the prime minister was coming to visit. So it was a very staged event, very controlled. And Israelis are um, are feeling that they have a kind of amazingly disappearing prime minister. Why do you think he hasn't met with anybody yet? What do you think is going on there? I'm a political reporter and not a psychologist, so <laughs> I'm not the right person. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I've observed Netanyahu for pretty much my entire career. Um, and he's a guy who has, you know, a lot of controversy around him, but this is astounding, in my opinion, even for him. I mean, it's it's just such a vacuum of leadership. Today, um, Netanyahu's national security advisor, Tzachi Negbi, uh, became the first official of the Israeli government. Now, remember, we're eight days into this war. Yeah. He became the first official of the uh, Netanyahu administration to take questions from journalists he got some pretty rough questions, but he's not a minister. He's not elected. He's, you know, an advisor to the prime minister. And one of the questions he was asked was, is the prime minister going to stand up and take responsibility? Is the prime minister going to apologize to the people for mm -hmm. this unimaginable failure to protect national security? And he didn't really answer those questions. He took a certain measure of responsibility himself. Um, it, I've been thinking a, a lot about this, and, and you know, we were covering obvious, obviously the um, internal strife that was happening in Israel before all of this because of the judicial reforms that Netanyahu was trying to put into place, and 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 how so many Israelis were unhappy already with his leadership, and and kind of the domestic strife that was happening there. And when when you hear about um, Netanyahu saying essentially they're going to eradicate Hamas from from um, Gaza, and, and they won't stop until until they do. And you don't know what the off-ramp will be, but but when there is an off-ramp, should it even include, I'm wondering if Israelis feel this, should it even include their prime minister? Um, can Israel be safe and, and move forward politically with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in place, considering his history and, and what he's allowed to happen? You're asking one of the all-important questions confronting Israelis right now, and that's why having a thousand people in central Tel Aviv mid down a Saturday screaming resign is a significant thing, especially, you have to remember, um, we don't yet know how many dead there are. We don't yet have a real number of the hostages. Today, the National Security Advisor said, yeah, between 150 and 200. The government and Netanyahu personally, who likes to call himself Israel's Mr. Security, have been caught on the back foot. And it's not only a humiliation for him and for them, but it is 
the greatest civilian tragedy in the history of Israel, and it's one of the worst terror attacks ever recorded anywhere. So I would say we're still starting here to process all this. Mm. I I know that Netanyahu has this reputation of being a political magician and always bouncing back, but I can't see how he's going to survive this. And Israeli history teaches us that prime ministers in Israel who were, failed to protect the country, uh, the country's security, have not survived politically.